Well, finally, we are, I would say, 99.9% .9 ready for the Christmas tour. So come on in. You can see how we are starting to stage the entry table. There'll probably be some kind of overhang. It's kind of cold, I would say cold and misty. This morning it was really foggy, but nevertheless, it's not raining. Is that Charlie? Who is it? The cool bulbs. Who was that? Was that Charlie? Miss Linda. Miss Linda. I, I don't know who that was, but it was some of the kiddos in the neighborhood. So come on in, come on in, and I hope to see some of those those kitties who will come to see Miss Linda on the home tour today. So I have been a rabid elf. Stuart and Leah will tell you, there has been a lot to do to get ready for this tour today. And as I said earlier, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it maybe 99.9. .9. After we finish video, videoing this first section of the tour, then there are a few things that still remain, still need a little zhuzhing before the tour starts at four. And right now, what time is it? It is 10.48, so I've got just, just, a few, just, a, <laughs> just a few hours, I guess, beforehand. Now, to keep everything, and Stuart, if, first let's just kind of do maybe a revolution of what you would see when you first walk in, paying special attention to some of the different focal points I have. And I will also say that this is where some of my, my garden design principles come in, and that is focal points, vistas, and the repetition of certain same elements across a space. So in this case, it is white poinsettias that start here and then they go to the back of the back of the cottage. Um, and that's been that's been really helpful. But now let's let's kind of get granular and look at some of some of the details. Um, we did have Christmas music playing, and I don't know what happened. We've been having some <laughs> vexing issues with Alexa this morning. Uh, but we'll get that straightened out. The people that arrive, they there will be lots of candlelight that I have not lit yet, and there will also be Christmas music playing. Now, we're not going to play it right now because sometimes we get in trouble from the music <laughs> YouTube people on that. Um, so here are some of the little details that I want to point out, but that would be so easy and inexpensive to replicate. So if I did nothing else to decorate, if I didn't put up a tree, if I didn't hang any stockings, the one thing I would do every year is to put greenery, different kinds of greenery above almost every painting because I think it looks so simple, it's so elegant, and it's very, very much garden inspired. What kind of greenery is that? So this is actually recycled greenery from, that looks like it's camellia camellia buds, and this was in the flower arrangement I had on my Thanksgiving table. So I'm recycling a lot of those things. I've also recycled some of the berries. So all of my vignettes kind of tell a little story. So the story here is if you hear Frank Sinatra playing in the background, Frank may have come in, he may have hung up yeah. his hat, he may have put a little jaunty berry or something in the ribbon around his hat. So to me, Every vignette is, is something of a story. So this, the story of this tree um, really was inspired by an image I saw in Martha Stewart Living. You may recall, I had it on my mood board for a very, very long time. And to the extent possible, I replicated different elements of a number of different trees. I absolutely love this tree. I bought it online. Um, it was sold out for a while. It might still be available, but it is probably of all of the things in the cottage, this is probably my favorite thing. It looks icy. It looks like a winter wonderland, which is kind of what I have entitled it. I also love it because even though now it is not lit, at night, these little spotlights come up and they illuminate it really dramatically against the darkness of the ambiance around it. And also it creates 
fabulous shadows on the ceiling. So one of my favorite things to do will be to come out here at night and in the morning when everything is dark except for the illumination of the Christmas tree. A lot of the ornaments, well, they were just sourced in different places. Some of them I had, some of them I purchased online, some of them I purchased locally. I think just like in the garden, what really makes it special, there's my neighbor, she's cleaning up her yard, so it'll look good for the house tour. Um, but what I think is really helpful is that there's all sorts of different lines, shapes, and forms on the Christmas tree itself. So there's the verticality of the icicles, there's the globular spherical form of the, the different baubles, and then there's even this kind of upside down pyramidal form of the grape clusters. Those are some antique mercury ornaments that I've had for a very long time. And very obviously, it's in a color palette that befits that befits the cottage, it, be, it befits the parlor. And I think one of my, the funnest things is that I was able to play in a completely different color palette here. And I love it. And I love the fact that as you move through the cottage, the color palette begins to change with you just as it would in a garden. So I'm all about coordinating the colors. Um, I, this year it was silver, every iteration of blue, aqua, navy, down to my gift wrap, down to um, the little adornments, the picks and things that decorate, that decorate them. And then what is always helpful is to have remote control on off, and I can kind of hide that remote under there. So this is the Christmas tree that they'll see when they come in the door. I absolutely love it and it's beautiful at night when it's lit up. And it's also nicely framed, I think, by, by the, the wreaths that hang on either side in this set of windows and in the other set of windows. Um, you will notice that even my co paper coffee cup coordinates, <laughs> and you'll notice that it says Hilton. That's because my son Johnny got home last night and I needed everything to stay pretty pristine for the home tour, so the three of us did a staycation at the fabulous Skirvin downtown. Have you guys been there? Oh my word, it's just spectacular. It's one of the oldest hotels in downtown Oklahoma City. If you come, you must stay there. So this is my coffee from there this morning. And I still have yet to drink my first full cup. Um, the same thematic kind of continued through on the mantle. So it's winter wonderland and icy blue. So these are the new stockings that I got this year. Um, and I needed new stockings because I have new daughters-in-law. And so each one of them now has their stocking. And on each stocking, which is embroidered with their name, there is also an ornament that is their initial. And so they'll be able to go directly, directly to their stocking. Though if they went directly to it, in all likelihood, everything would come crashing down. So this is really more for visual appeal and charm. <laughs> um, their real stocking stuffer things actually go in different stockings. So I love the ombre tone of all of the different blues of the bottle brush Christmas trees, of my leaves that I spray painted. Um, I love the way these stocking holders are kind of in the same metallic that replicates the frame of the Jacobson painting. Uh, say that last thing again, I can get over there. Now. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, so, so I love the way that the stocking holders in this kind of burnished brass match the color of the frame of the Jacobson. And then true to form, sweet Charlie and Betsy put together the little tussy oh, mussies that adorn each one of the stockings. And I've got color coordinated candy canes and chocolate icicles. And what else do I have? Everything pretty much is color coordinated. And then I have some sweet ornaments that I like to use on the stockings. Pretty much I did this at the other house too. And they're just reindeer. And so it kind of contributes to the winter wonderland theme. 
The branching, the white branching, was a Trader Joe's find. And again, I like the way that it kind of echoes that, that theme. But also, this was a great find. I got these candle holders at Anthropology, and they were on sale for 75% off. Now, I haven't lit any of my candles yet, and they may or may not get lit during the home tour because with a lot of people coming through, that may not be the safest thing. But even when not lit, their ombre effect and the colors of them contribute, I think, to the painting and are perfect color echoes, another garden principle to the painting itself. So this is an occasion when artwork definitely definitely inspires my, inspires my decor. Um, I, this was a print that I got from that wonderful Instagram account that I showed you a while ago. And I can't remember the name of it, Leah. Can you, we'll link to it. Um, and this was a print that was all made out of natural elements and originally the original collage, and then she made a print of it. So this still also continues with the kind of the cottagey feel with a little dwellings below and then the fact that it looks winter wonderland and anywhere I could find white poinsettias in whatever size I would pick some up and they are just they're just kind of kind of festive if my amaryllis had already been in bloom probably they would be holding center stage but they can come they can come into play a little bit later for the latter part of christmas because you know there's kind of two different seasons there's the first part of december and there's the latter part of december when when things really start getting in a frenzy before santa comes to town <laughs> so um over here are some things that are near and dear to my heart. These wooden angels I got as a Christmas present for my second mom, I don't know how many years ago. And she had them in the keeping room for many, many years. And after she passed, I, I took them. And I always like to put some kind of little halo on their heads. I love the fact that this one seems to be kind of feeding the birds. In this case, maybe some blue candy canes. Again, it's about telling a story for me. Um, it was important that I have pictures of my kiddos out for the world to see because since they don't live at home, I want my neighbors to see that they actually do exist. <laughs> and, and here they are. And not only that, it pleased me so much when Johnny walked in last night and, and he was so touched that his picture and Delphia's picture were right here front and center. And they gave me this sweet little ginger jar and some of the other things that are, that are up here. A friend of mine from my old neighborhood gave me this last year and I think it fits in here at the cottage far better than it did um, that it did at the other place. Again, echoes of the blue tones throughout the parlor. And then just imagine that you were coming in the door and I was greeting you not only with Christmas music, but I was also greeting you with a glass of champagne that I've got set up here on the bar. And I do frequently do that when I know that I've got guests coming and I know what they like to drink. I will set the bar up here at least um, for wine or something like this so that when they come in, I can greet them. And I think that makes it really, really special. So this is all festooned in white and silver and greenery. And by the way, imagine what this tableau would look like without all of that greenery. I think it just would not resonate or be nearly as rich looking. And this is my favorite greenery to use. And fortunately, it is the greenery that I just cut off of the Arbor Vita that is outside on the east side of my house. I've cut, I don't know how much of it, and I always need to cut more. Leah has cut some <laughs> for me, Jamie has cut some, because it's my favorite thing to festoon my different artwork with. And then I've just got some garland that I've attached some pine cones to and some ornaments that then are hanging in kind of special ways. And then these little picks that I love, these little snowflake picks kind of speak to that winter wonderland theme and they are decorating my packages. They can decorate um, hors d'oeuvres or things on my bar and they look just kind of sweet there. So that is pretty much the parlor. Stuart, what does it say? We take a break before we advance to the kitchen. 
Well, fortunately, I started my Christmas shopping pretty early, so most of the gifts arrived. I still have a, a lot of wrapping to do, but enough arrived so that the gifts themselves can be part of the decor, and I love that I love because it looks like the top of the table. Yeah, it looks like it's the top <laughs> of the table. And, you know, these are ideas, quite frankly, I don't have any new ideas. These are ideas that I steal from catalogs, from restoration hardware catalogs, anthropology catalogs, and you just take their ideas and you stage them. Now, in the real world, would you probably live like this? No, I'd want to be able to set my drink on that little coffee table, that, that little cocktail table. But right now, remember, this is a holiday tour. This is all about magic and ideas, and it is like a showroom. It's like a studio. Uh, Stuart has often said, sometimes it would be easier if I didn't live here. <laughs> because this home is our studio, isn't it, Stuart? It is. Okay, so let's walk this way then. And if you'll follow around here, and then you can get kind of from this vantage point, if you torqued and you tried to take in all of the parlor, then this is what you would see. And I think it looks pretty magical. And I'll be so curious um, when my son Johnny and my daughter-in-law Delphia get here, where, what places they migrate towards to sit in. That is pretty nice on a sunny day, even in, especially in the winter time when that sun comes through. So in the kitchen, here we are. And we've kind of been battling <laughs> all the last minute, all the last minute things um, that you experience. Like right now, I need to replace a light bulb in there. Those are last minute uh, little issues that I'll be doing between now and the actual tour. I have imagined, if you will, this is again all about telling a story that I am having some kind of sweet treat buffet and this is where it's all set up and this is one of those cases where something that is consumable also serves as decor and i just i, I love the way all of the glass domed things look to me this reminds me of maybe a high-end bakery or something where so many of their things are encased in glass and a lot of these i also love because they are vintage finds. So I, a lot of these I have sourced from thrift stores. That one is thrifted. The top of this one was thrifted. This is, okay, here's a way that you can use different things that you had. So this was a very tall vessel that I had. The bottom broke. I saved the lid. I bought this at, um, at a thrift store. And then I just use the lid of this and I can make another treats vessel, if you will. And by the way, a, the, and I put it here so that I could show you, it was one of those just little wonderful things when the Danish butter cookies from Trader Joe's <laughs> perfectly fit into that container. And I loved the little fluted cups that they came in, and that adds a different, different texture and a different dimension, I think, to, to the scene that is set. It's a little bit more, um, it's a little bit more old fashioned and it speaks to the kids. Now, Stuart said something kind of funny, um, <laughs> and that's, he said, he said, poor Santa, he, he did, it had been a hard Christmas and he'd had enough. So instead of seeing the charm of this little bell <laughs> hanging on <laughs> this ivy topiary that I got from Trader Joe's, Stuart saw something far more sinister. I think Santa's probably the most stressed out person. Uh, pro Santa's probably pretty stressed out. Maybe almost as much as those of us that are on, that are on this tour today. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, everyone. <laughs> yes. So the Rees, the Rees that are around the sconces, those are boxwood Rees from Trader Joe's. And then I went and I just bought a huge, or actually Hubs bought them for me, a huge bouquet of rose hips 
and I just stuck those in, and I think it's simple elegance. I did something similar around the plates at the old house that were surrounding a painting above the fireplace in the kitchen, and I love the look so much that I kind of replicated it here. Um, the rhythm and repetition of those white poinsettias continue onto the island, and I really debated whether or not to put anything in this fabulous bowl, but I decided not to. I thought it just looked architectural and like a piece of art really cool. in and of itself. It kind of reminds me of, is it the egg in Chicago? Oh. Um, and I, I, I just think it's absolutely beautiful. Plus, again, it speaks to the silver baubles of these mercury ornaments, glass ornaments that I have suspended from the side of these baskets that belonged to my mother-in-law. And I like to bring them out, especially with poinsettias in them, because that's how she displayed them at her home when we would go there for the holidays. And then nothing is a more beautiful bubble than a Granny Smith apple. That's, and so, that's, that's yeah, gran just Granny Smith apples. And I just stuck um, little stakes in them so I could really ensure that they were stable inside there by inserting them into, into the soil. So I think, it's, I think it's beautiful. It makes a statement. Yes, if, if we were dining here, would I remove those? Yes, just like when I have Thanksgiving or I have Christmas and I have a really spectacular centerpiece, the centerpiece gets moved before we, we dine. But that way I can enjoy the centerpiece for the duration of, of the table being set. Practically that doesn't work and you just remove it. So then you get kind of, you know, you get a twofer. Um, so this is one of my favorite things. I don't collect a lot of things, but my, my friend Deborah went to Scandinavia. She visited the Scandinavian countries last year and she brought me back a lot of these little wooden Christmas trees. And interestingly, uh, Garden Gate Magazine last year, one of their gift set ornaments were also wooden Christmas trees. And so what that did was just, I was just able to create a little forest. <laughs> she also gave me some of these little mushrooms and, and it almost looks like a mountain setting, doesn't it? it does, or it that's, does. that's the story it's telling me. It um, really does. It has yeah. like the sun coming over the mountain in the background. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the little church is, is in the village and then the little cabins are, are mountainside with the evergreen trees and I think I like the little story that it tells without it being too without it being too fussy. Something else that was kind of fun and and very happenstance and these are the kind of things that as Stuart would say just make me squeal with delight. But the ribbon that I bought to wrap my packages in the parlor that velvet ribbon um, it came on wooden spools. And so these are the wooden spools that I'm using as risers for some of these little Christmas trees. So I'm recycling the, the wooden spools. And then down here, as part of the story, we have Father Christmas, and he is maybe gifting Linda a topiary for Christmas and getting ready to hang a wreath and maybe a wooden horse for I don't know for one of the one of the kiddos. So that's what I mean by about telling little stories and when I put them into place it it's just a sweet little wonderland I think. A little mountain village. This was a dear ornament that was given to me by someone years ago. And then this is where I'm beginning to segue with the blues and everything, <laughs> and then starting to infuse some of the reds and the more traditional colors. And on this side of the island, I have another Christmas tree. And yes, before anybody tells me, I will be putting up the dust buster. <laughs> before the guests arrive, but right now it is still being pressed into service. Um, this, this is a sweet ornament. My sister Barb made this for me. And I don't have a lot of 
memories from my very early childhood um, after my mom died, but this apparently was my, my lovey dog that I loved to death and I'd forgotten about it until she made me this Christmas ornament. And I thought that was the sweetest thing because Christmas is all about evoking memories. And I thought that was one of the most thoughtful gifts I've ever, ever received. And then over here, it's just another little station if you wanna grab a drink, if um, it's, let's just say it's just pretty. And then I've got this gorgeous watercolor from my sister, Beth. Dr. Seuss Santa. It is kind of a Dr. Seuss Santa. This was a gift, a monograph, monogrammed gift. So I think the area is very festive. I like to think it's not too overdone. None of the things that are on the shelf above the stove, which by the way, has not turned out to be problematic at all. When I first moved into the cottage, I was wondering that. It hasn't turned out to be a problem at all. But all of those things are up there. They won't be in the way when I cook. And the lower surfaces, I can pretty much keep most of this up throughout the holidays and it really won't get in the way. These bigger arrangements will probably be relocated someplace else. So um, that kind of does it for the kitchen and the parlor. Stuart, what do you think? There's, a, there's just a few other appointments over here. Little candles that are lit. Some more wooden spoons if people want to grab one to delve into all of the chocolates. And most of those chocolates, I do make a lot of my own, but I haven't had time to do my traditional holiday baking yet. That will come. I haven't got my you're, you're, you haven't gotten your toffee yet, so that, that will come. I'll start working on that this week. But there are all sorts of other confections on, on the sweet treat table, <laughs> most of which were compliments of, of Trader Joe's. And then these wonderful soft peppermint sticks, which are my happy present, my smile present for the month of December. And I'll be having a big basket filled with those before too long. As smile presents. So there you go. I think, Stuart, let's take a break here and why don't we move into another part of the house? And now a little intermission. This week was especially busy, not only because of the house tour coming up, but also because of an upcoming episode that I'm going to be in on Homeworthy. So they're going to be here on December 8th and we are going to shoot a video of the cottage decked out for the holidays. I'm not sure when it will air, but they're going to shoot on December 8th. So that's gonna be really fun and I'm gonna to have to kind of keep my Christmas act together between <laughs> now and then. Something else that I did was I did a radio interview on NPR with Mike McGrath on You Bet Your Garden. And I was just so pleased because he is extremely enthusiastic about the Garden Journal. And he made a point to figure out a way that we could get in an interview about the journal before the holidays so people could gift it. And I'm, I'm just so proud of it. I really do think it's, it's um, it's both practical, poetic, and pretty. And if you are coming to the home tour, you will be able to buy them. Uh, I'll have copies of my book and I will have copies of the journal. They're $30 a piece. And by the way, we're also coming out with a boxed set of the two of them to geld together. They will both have the same color cover and those will be coming out pretty soon. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a twofer, but I'm excited about that. I believe the You Bet Your Garden interview will air on December 9th, but I will confirm that and I will certainly let you know. So that also, that also kind of took up some time. And then of course, there's just the very small but very important thing and that's that my son Johnny arrived last night. So we've got lots of celebrating to do with him and just spending some time together. So Stuart, uh, that's my sales pitch for my garden journal. You can buy it online. We will of course have links below. I do think it makes a brilliant gift and if I were gifting it, I would probably put an, a couple of additional pieces of ribbon in there, maybe in um, in a holiday red and maybe also tuck a little bit of holly or something in there. And I think in and of itself, even not wrapped, it would be a beautiful gift. So now let's move on to the other parts of the house. 
So if you look down the hall, you can see that this, this focal point, this line of sight goes directly to another large uh, potted plant full of those white poinsettias and greenery that cascades over my battery operated painting lights. And then just so Santa can get in and out, <laughs> those are Santa's keys that are hung on around the edge of the painting itself. And you may wonder why I'm not showing you anything over here and why I didn't decorate this cabinet area. And it's because this will get a lot of use. There's a TV behind here. I've got uh, practical daily living stuff stashed behind here. And I also wanted most of the visual decorating to be on this side of, of the cottage. This is more, I think it's, it's beautiful just by itself without a lot of additional decorating. So Stuart, let's, tor let's torque this way and let's go into my bedroom. So let's turn the corner and the hallway is also decorated. So I've got another topiary ivy with more of those rose hips, lots of different pine cones and things, nature inspired, battery operated candles. Um, over on the opposite side where I have my candle chest, and I store all of my candles in here. This is where I have my, my book of the month, my inspirational book. In this case, it is still my French country home, and I have, I have it opened to some different winter scenes. And you can see some of the inspirational notes that I took from this book. And then I just like the fact that I've got a bookmark with a cherry red ribbon and some some greenery. And someone was asking me, I think it was kind of funny, would, would all of my bathrooms be available to see on the, on the home tour? And yes, they are. And you can see in this bathroom that I have another ivy wreath and some more of the rose hips. I love and it, oh yeah, in the shower. <laughs> so really cool. yeah, in both of my showers, I love this idea, and that's that there is just eucalyptus in there, and I like the way it looks, whether it's fresh or dried. But I also like the fact that the scent it infuses when you shower, it doesn't have to be removed. I do need to straighten this before I forget, but it doesn't have to be removed. And I, I like that. I, I love those little grace notes in, um, in the showers and because it just is a little aromatherapy, a touch of aromatherapy. So there is the guest bath. And now let's go into my bedroom. And Stuart, you probably recognize these. <laughs> these were purchased thrifted. These oh, yeah. little pear topiaries, these were were thrifted and I love them yeah, and I've got, yeah, and they match the, the new lamps that I got for the seasons, season. And then when, when it gets to be spring, I will switch these out. You know, you can, in, in a small space, I think to make it interesting because you don't have a lot of surfaces to decorate, you switch things out seasonally. And I think that's a fun thing to do. And I, I do have a storage area in my basement. A lot of you ask where I store all of this stuff and a good bit of it is, um, a good bit of it is in the basement. And we've got mama bear, papa bear, and baby bear. And we've got mama bear, papa bear, and baby bear keeping Father Christmas company. Um, not a lot going on over here, but I do have some more. I'm starting to go into the grays, some more berries that were salvaged from the Thanksgiving centerpiece. And I like reusing those things. And I also, these are things that also I probably would keep up in the winter time, even after the holidays, because they look beautiful they look beautiful dried, as do these terra hydrangeas. They're a southern living plant. I think they're absolutely gorgeous, and I couldn't bear to put them up because I think they look they look beautiful, if yeah, not if not Christmassy. No, my closet will not be available for people to look in because I did have to 
you know, I did have to have a few places where I could hide, I could hide some stuff. Um, I've got my new bedding that I think looks kind of rich and wintry, has a wintry feel to it. Um, this is an arrangement that I have had here for a long time. It's just a bouquet of absolutely beautiful branches that Hubs brought me back from one of his adventures, and it was so sweet, and I, I love the bouquet of branches, especially in the winter. So I've just added more rose hips to it and some eucalyptus. So not, you know, not a lot going on. I did add a couple of, of pillows here that very much match kind of the sagey green that's going on in the eucalyptus and other parts, um, other parts of the greenery. Um, I have had these gold pine cones forever. They used to, I always used to have them in the living room over a large map of the world, but here they are adorning this beautiful image that always reminds me of my first mom. Um, this wreath, I don't know that it's still available. This was a wreath that I got from Durain, Terrain a couple of, a couple of years ago, and it is festive without being, I guess, traditionally festive. So I, I like that about it, and I mostly I like the fact that it is matching kind of the color sway, the color sway of, of the room. It's very, very cool. Stuart, you want to take a little break here before we go to the bathroom? Sounds good. So, so many of you <laughs> are concerned about my privacy in this. Yes, it is a public bathroom. Lots of people see it. Um, but believe me, I have plenty of privacy. I've got a remote controlled blind. Fancy. Fancy that goes up and goes down. And just so you'll know, we have done a silhouette test and no at yeah. night. Um, or during the day, you cannot really see anything through it when you're looking from the outside in. Um, but what I do, what I do like to do is I'll bring it down practically all the way, just leaving about six inches at the bottom. Nobody can see in, but when I'm bathing, I can look out across the street at the charming holiday lights that are on across the street. And between that and having my own Christmas tree in here and my candles lit and my stockings hanging on the towel rack, it, it is pretty magical. And then these are those sensory, sensor operated candles that just come on magically. They come on magically at dusk. And so that is another element of illumination. These guys. Mm -hmm. And then also I have the wreaths that are illuminated from both sides. So I get to enjoy those little swipe, little sweet twinkle lights. That's hard to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, sweet twinkle lights from outside and from in. And it's just, it, to me, it's, it's just simple, but kind of elegant and not overdone. I think a, a modest little cottage like this from the outside, if it just had tons of blow up Santas and every single thing lit and every tree lit, it just wouldn't resonate so authentically. So for me, I wanted to keep it simple. And then I have showed you so many times ad nauseum, the beautiful gallery wall that my, my friend of my friend Deborah's photographs. And then I did indeed get a couple, a couple more orchids to match. And so that is festive in kind of a non-traditional way. And then in all of the stockings, I have tucked in just little candles, aromatherapy kinds of things, just uh, toiletry, toiletry inspired grace notes that fill the stockings. And yes, the stockings will actually be emptied and gifted to my kids at the appropriate time. So that is the primary or master suite, the hallway, um, well, we can show this the part guest of the bath. You can, yeah, you. That's oh, crazy. you can actually hey, show this part of the bathroom. Ever seen this part I know <laughs> because this is where I live. I still have a few things to. I still have a few things to put up. But there's another orchid on this side. Um, Stuart, be careful that you can't be seen. Yeah, hey, I know. I gotta be careful. Um, and. 
so it, it, is, it is beautiful, beautiful too. These images, by the way, were taken by my buddy Linda Cavanaugh. When I was working with her at Channel 4, we went on a photography retreat together and she, she took these of me and I really, really have always liked them. She staged it beautifully and that's been, that's been kind of fun for me. So that completes part one of the Christmas Cottage Tour. Stay tuned tomorrow for part two. We will visit Santa's workshop, AKA my office. <laughs> we'll go into the great room, um, the guest bedroom, and we'll just see how those halls are decked. So thanks for joining me on this tour. I hope you got just a few ideas. Make sure to comment below. If you enjoy this kind of video, you know, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, follow along, and more importantly, share it with others. Um, sit and watch it with your friends. That might be kind of a fun thing to do and you can share ideas. So thanks and I will see you tomorrow.